amazing, amazing workshop for you guys. We have been doing Startup Studio all day and you guys signed up for it, so obviously you know that this is a deep dive into the health and wellness industry. And the genesis of Startup Studio was to really acknowledge the fact that we have an audience and community of an amazing women who are either startup founders, or you have startup ambitions, or you work for startups, quite frankly. And there is just so much information out there. How do you actionalize? everything that you are hearing, what is happening in the marketplace within these very specific industries. And so what we've done is throughout the day actually create a focus around four different categories and you guys are all here to hear about the health and wellness industry. Awesome. So. Thank you so much for coming, first and foremost. Just a quick overview of what you're going to see over the course of the next hour and a half. And just so you guys know, everything that we're doing has been pushed a half an hour, so you won't miss anything that's happening outside of this. So just really, really be here, be immersed, have a good time, and ask questions at the end. Um, but you know, what I wanted to share was the fact that you know, with Startup Studio, our goal here is at Girl Boss is to help redefine, help you all rather, redefine the meaning of success. And we're really excited for the second time to be doing this with Chromebook because as a brand, we, super, we really, really believe in delivering the tools to you all to be able to do that. And Chromebook has created a product that is really allowing you all to maximize productivity and really think about how technology can work for you in a world where we are working bi-coastally, we are working across different offices and remotely and how we are really thinking about technology and resources in a totally different way. And so I think that as we go through this, you're going to see a bunch of different tools and tips. There's going to be an interactive section, session rather. And I'm just going to kick it off and let Kate take it away. So you guys are in for a treat. This is Kate Simmons, one of our COO. And she's going to give you guys an industry overview. And she's actually going to ask you what you guys want to hear about. Yes. Yeah. And I am indeed. Hi guys, um, so I'm Kate Simmons and um, I'm here representing the company that I helped to build called Wunderbar Pilates. We're a, a machine-based Pilates studio. We have nine brick and mortar studios in LA, New York, and San Diego. And um, we, when I say we, I mean the, the founder and I, her name is Amy Jordan and she would be here but she's throwing a party for her son who's turning seven today. Uh, she and I, um, both of us, while pregnant, decided that we wanted to do our own thing. We were running a couple of really successful Pilates Plus studios. And if you know Pilates Plus, it's, it's gone over a lot of different names over the years. Right now, I think it's being called uh, Legree Fitness. So we were running a couple of those studios. We were doing a really good job of it. And we kind of figured... We, we know how to do this. So Amy decided that she wanted to make her own machine. She wanted to sort of innovate. And I said, well, I think that's a great idea, and I could write a book on how to run this shit, so let's do it. So we created um, a brand. We figured, like, we're smart girls. How hard could it be? And it was ridiculously hard. If we had any idea what it was going to take, we may not have done it. So the best part about it was that we didn't know, thank goodness for ignorance, and for most of all, belief. We believed we could do it. We had an idea, we had a vision, we had a concept, and we had passion, and she was dating a lawyer. So we were like, we've got what we need, we've, you know, we got all the tools. Um, so I can tell you a little bit about that startup experience, if that's valuable. More than anything else, I would like to be able to tell you something that's going to serve you where you are today. So I'm here talking about the state of the industry. And before I give you a few choices about what I can cover, I wanted to, um, I wanted to point something out. If you'll take a look at the people that you're sitting around a table with, and you take a look at the people who are in this room and you hear the people who are outside of this room, um, chances are we're all consumers of the health and wellness industry, right? We exercise, we think about our nutrition, we think about, we, we, we work on our mind, our body, our spirit, and our emotions, right? We try to be well, we work on being well. So, 
Essentially, we are all, you all in this room and I, we're, we are the industry because we're part of it as consumers. Some of you are part of it as service providers. Do we have any service providers, like people who teach classes or are already involved in it? Okay, so a lot of service providers. Um, consumers, just probably almost all of us probably. And then anybody um, running a company or working in a company already? Okay, cool. And then is the main idea that you want, you're, you're getting into the space as an entrepreneur, you want to start something, you want to start something in this space, is that the basic idea? Great. Okay. So I'm going to ask, um, I'm going to ask one question of you. Um, if you had to create, or if you had to choose one state, one emotional state that you wanted to create in the context of the health and wellness industry, what would it be? What are you trying to create? Are you trying to create empowerment or passion within yourself and for others? Are you trying to create inspiration or confidence? Are you trying to create acceptance or peace, right? What are you trying to create? If you could pick one thing, just have it in your mind and pick that. And I would suggest that you call that your vision and you call that your North Star and you refer to it and you make that the thing that guides everything that you do, right? So if you're going to embark on a crazy mission of starting up a company and uh, employing other people and delivering a service, you better really know what you intend, who you are, and what you're trying to create. That's, I think, number one. And then from there, you figure out what resources you have, what tools you have, and you move on from there to make a plan, right? So what, it, I've got a couple of things I can tell you about, and you tell me what's valuable. I can give you um, details about how I completely ditched my career in entertainment and came to this industry. I could tell you about how the actual startup process of the company worked. I could tell you about, we could, we could look at the, the current trends that um, the American College of Sports Medicine thinks are valuable today. Or we could look at some of the interesting trends that I'm seeing and that I think are important. So do we want to talk about trends? Do we want to talk about startup story? I would probably only have another maybe 10 minutes with you guys, something like that. So what's valuable? I've got like slides for days. Yeah. Anything? Yes. Okay. Sound okay? Okay, cool. So um, uh, I mentioned that I was a, um, I was in entertainment. I was a development, um, television development person. And a friend of my husband's was about to open up a Pilates studio. She um, was lamenting to me at a family dinner party that she had no instructors. And again, ignorance is, is really handy because I was like, how hard could it be? Let me do that. I'll do that. I was always, a, um, I exercised, I did every single thing from Jane Fonda's workout tape, the audio cassette tape, like for real. I don't know if anybody even knows what those are anymore. That's where I started when I was 12 in 1982. Um, and... So I had done everything. She asked me to be an instructor. I went and did a little bit of training. It was very, very minimal. And we started teaching. And what we found was in this very small community um, in northern Glendale, which is just a, it, it's a little tiny community that often plays, oftentimes people go and shoot movies there because it looks like a small town from somewhere else. Um, so in this little tiny town, people were willing to fork out like $200 a month to come do Pilates at this little studio. And I was shocked. Um, very shortly after I started teaching for her, I quit my job and started teaching full time and helping her run the studios. Um, we, we opened a second and at a certain point, uh, as I mentioned before, we got this big idea that we wanted to create something different. She, Amy uh, Jordan, who is the owner and the founder, designed a machine, and then we had, we had absolutely zero knowledge, just an idea. Um, basically, from there, we had to figure out finding an engineer, somebody who would actually 
create the machine and then a manufacturer. So we literally went from absolute zero um, to try to create this machine. Um, and I have to say, we're here in the, in the Google Chromebook suite. We Googled a lot of things. <laughs> we had to try to figure out what we didn't know. We didn't even know what we didn't know. Um, but we hired designers, we created a, a look and a feel, and we went and did, um, you know, we did some, some research as to who our customers were. We already kind of knew. Um, but I think that's a really important point to know who your customers are, right? Who do you want to serve? There are, you know, if you think about the generations of people you've got, Baby boomers who are aging people typically have resources, time, and want to live well. You've got Gen Xers like myself who are, that's the group that we tend to call our mommies with money. Those are, a, that's a very, very important segment of our business. And we have millennials who oftentimes you want to um, market to their behavior because they are, they're folks who are relating to your business um, mobily and socially, right? And then you've got um, Gen Z, you've got a bunch of kids and with, um, with, that are, I think, really underserved. So you have to think about who you're serving. So we figured out who we wanted to serve, um, and we, uh, we basically put all the pieces into place, changed the brands of our existing studios, and then went out with a franchise offering. Um, Interesting, that, that's an interesting thing about, that, that I learned about franchise, is that um, we, we put a pause on accepting any new franchisees, because what we found is that the franchisees we had were people who really wanted to start their own business, but stopped short of doing their own thing. And I would, um, I, that's I think a really interesting um, piece of it. Is anybody interested in, uh, becoming part of a franchise, okay. I would say make sure that what you want to create is in alignment with that franchise and what that franchise stands for because there are going to be a lot of restrictions on you as to what you can do. Um, so that's the basic idea of our startup. We created a franchise, we went out, we learned a bunch of things, we made every possible mistake we could think of and we're still making mistakes. Like I usually tell people that I train that if you don't crash the software once, then you're not really trying hard enough. Because I crashed it at least four times um, and, I, and I only did that because I was really trying to figure stuff out. Um, does anybody have any, um, any interest in looking at like the top 10 fitness trends in the industry or is that, yeah? Okay, cool. So let's go to that slide. And we're gonna take a look at this. Okay, there's a lot of words on there, but I'm just gonna touch on a couple of the things. And, all right. Now, oh, how do I go there? All right, she's gonna help me out. So, all right, so number one. So these are number one through 10. Number one is high impact, or sorry, high intensity uh, interval training. And, I think that that's really popular for two reasons. First, as a provider or as a studio, you can start, you can do that with a reasonably low cost, right? You do not, it, it's a concept. It, you don't need to have gigantic pieces of equipment that each cost $10,000. You could, but you don't have to. Um, and for clients, it's really appealing because you can get in and out. It's a very efficient workout. So I think that's, that, there's a very good reason why it's number one. Um, Small group training, thats they call that five people or more. That's what I refer to as boutique fitness. That's what we're doing over at Wundabar. We have 10 machines or somewhere around 10 machines. And I think the, the biggest thing that's important or interesting about this is that it's intimate enough, personalized enough, and it gives people an experience. That experience, it's not on this list, but it's on my list of what I think are the most important trends. What you're giving people is not just a service. You're giving people an experience. And it's everything from, uh, you know, the look and the feel of your website and your app to the voice in your email communications 
to the ease of booking on your software, to the temperature of the room, to the way it looks, to the way it smells, to what your instructors wear, it all matters. And the interesting thing that you'll find is that you'll hear about it, right? So we have influencers, but I would put out to you that everybody's an influencer. Every person who attends your class has a, a way to give feedback about you. So, and every person who's looking to take a class, oftentimes they will you know, refer to Yelp or ClassPass or various places to get some feedback on what they want to do. So creating the experience, this is I think the appeal of, oh, how, she's so good. You're so damn good. Okay, so I talked about Yelp a second, ClassPass, Listen360. I would highly recommend partnering with a company that um, helps you survey your customers. Listen360 is a great partner. We've worked with them for a couple of years. And all they do is survey your customers on a certain interval, like once every three months. And you'll learn the things that are not going well. Right? You'll learn the things that are going well, and then it, and it will prompt your users to post their positive comment as a review, as a five-star review in like one or two clicks. So I would highly recommend, don't be afraid of feedback, don't be afraid of angry, bitched out clients, because they are the ones who are really going to tell you what's what. Um, so Listen360 is a great partner in that area. Okay, so um, I'm thinking back to the list back to that list, the number three, wearable tech. I don't know if that really is um, pertinent to anybody in the room, but it's declining over um, from last year because I think people are more interested in an experience and in community. Um, body weight training, that's old school calisthenics that's never gonna go out of style. Strength training is really interesting because it has broad appeal across gender and also across generation, right? That's a very, that's, I think that strength training is always gonna be part of this top 10. Professionalism, I was super surprised and delighted to find that on there. One of the things that are one of the tenets of our work at Wunderbar and what we wanted to create was people who knew what they were doing, people who had genuine education and were there to help educate people about how to live better in their bodies. So we went through it, we spent a gigantic amount of time and resource on our training program and um, we've got people who are certified and know what they're doing. So I would recommend highly that you get educated, make sure you know what you're doing and hire people who know what they're doing and can, can really stand behind that. Um, and yoga always, you know, I think yoga was the very original boutique fitness. That was the, they were the first fitness studios that would, people would actually go as a destination to. And there's a lot of beautiful reinvention in that space that continues, and I think that continues to keep it fresh. Personal training, always on the top 10. Um, Older adults and functional fitness is going to finish out this whole topic. And I think that goes back to what I mentioned earlier about knowing your customers. You've got a humongous section of consumers who are aging and who want to be served. And so I think um, they're a huge opportunity. Um, as I said, they've got time, resources, and they, they, the desire to live well. And then things like functional fitness, it also speaks to that same generation. This is th these are things like posture, balance, um, improving your stride as a runner, improving your gait. So these are, it's, it, there's something happening, and I'm going to wrap up with this because I think I want to sit down and listen to these two fabulous women. I'm going to wrap up with this. Um, the thing that I think is the most interesting thing about the business is that it is turning inside out. And what I mean by that is that um, what was a, a, an industry that celebrated skinny and perfect and work hard and you know, no pain, no gain has become an industry where strong is prized, right? Where feeling good takes the place of looking good, where the conversation is much more about community than it is about competing with one another. So 
That's my favorite thing about what's happening in this space. That's one of the things that Amy Jordan and I were trying to create with Wundabar. That's just very quite honestly, personally, one of the things that I find um, powerful about being in this industry is that it is healing a space that a lot of people have struggled with, and myself included. I think we all spend a lot of time trying to be enough, right? And we're working in an industry where a lot of people come to the fitness and wellness industry hoping to be fixed or improved or bettered. But the good news is, and what I truly believe, is that we are enough right now, today, exactly as we are. And if you can figure out what it is that you want to bring to the world, that emotional state that I asked you to think of in the beginning, that inspiration or empowerment or confidence, if you can figure out what you want to bring to the world, then I feel like you've got a great vision for success. That's where to begin. So with that, I'm going to turn it over. And I think we've got something exciting and there's like an activity and we get to play on the computer. So I am going to turn it over and I thank you very much for your time and for listening. Thank you.